Hey Beaks, today we're going to talk a little bit about the physiology and anatomy of the circulatory system. Um, remember yesterday we said we actually have a double circuit, right? We have a pulmonary and a systemic circuit. And that's very important because it's all controlled by your nervous system for the most part, right? And your heart and everything has to work in this coordinated fashion. So the mammalian cardiovascular system meets the body's continuous demand for O2, right? Remember, you are starving all day long for oxygen, right? Cellular respiration needs oxygen at the end of that electron transport chain to accept the electrons so you can keep going, keep making ATP at, at, a, at a good rate. So your cells need this oxygen and the circulatory system is a, is a great way to make sure that they all have it. So for mammalian circulation, it's important to understand which side is which in the heart, right? Remember you have four chambers with two atria on top and two ventricles on the bottom. So the right side, if you're thinking of yourself just sitting there, the right side of your heart is the right side, right? And the left side would be the left side. But if you're looking down at a heart, you know, that was placed as if a body was laying on a table, well, then it's going to be switched for you, okay? And the easiest way to tell what side is what, almost always looking at the left ventricle because that has a very thick, you know, muscular wall there. So this is a circuit, right? So it's hard to say when it, when it starts and when it ends because it's a continuous circuit. However, usually when we're learning about the circulatory system, we talk about blood flow beginning at the right ventricle and pumping out to the lungs. All right, so we're going to begin here at the right ventricle. And we're going to pump blood to the lungs. So here is the right ventricle, right? You can see there's a decent amount of myocardium or muscle uh, structure down here, muscle tissue. And we're going to pump up, okay, here to, it's going to branch off. This is our pulmonary artery. And it's going to branch to both lungs. And this is where we're going to unload our uh, CO2 and we're going to pick up oxygen. And that's just via simple diffusion. Okay, now that we've done the gas exchange, we're coming back through pulmonary veins into the left atrium. And at the left atrium, we're going to go ahead and go down into the left ventricle. And if you notice, this myocardium layer here, right, is um, much thicker. Okay, this is the workhorse of our heart. And that's going to contract and force blood up through the aorta. Okay, and there's lots of branches here for the systemic circuit because it's either going to go to the top half of the body all the way down to the bottom half down to your, your toes, right? And then wherever you run into a capillary bed, there's going to be gas exchange there where we pick up CO2, deliver our oxygen for cellular respiration. And now we go ahead and we return back to the heart again. Okay, and this would be the main return back into your right atrium would be the inferior and superior vena cava, right? And now you know that this blood right here is deoxygenated. So we have to go ahead back to our right atrium all over again and go back to our pulmonary circuit pick up the oxygen in our lungs, drop off the CO2. Now we come back through the pulmonary veins and now we're oxygenated and we're going into the right, I'm sorry, the left atrium and we're gonna go down into the left ventricle and that's gonna start the systemic circuit. We're gonna do it all over again, right? Uh, one thing that certain uh, students ask is, is blood actually colored like oxygenated is red and deoxygenated is, is blue? No, they can have a slightly different shade to it, but no, 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 all blood is red, okay? Um, and then one of the things is, don't forget your heart is an organ, right? So your heart also needs to be fed um, oxygen and there are arteries all around your heart here, okay? And those are called the coronary arteries. And that's just, your aorta has to feed your heart with oxygen as well. So there's branches coming off of there to make sure that your heart has lots of oxygen so you can make ATP to keep that pumping going, right? So again, when the blood's coming back to the heart, from the superior or inferior vena cava, that's so that you can deliver it back to the heart again and send it off to the pulmonary circuit again and pick up more oxygen. All right, here's hoping this works well. Let's see. In mammals, blood pumped by the right side of the heart passes through the lungs and enters the left side of the heart. This is the pulmonary circuit. Blood pumped by the left side of the heart is distributed to the other body organs and returns to the right side of the heart. This is the systemic circuit. This pattern, called double circulation, ensures vigorous blood flow to the organs because the heart pumps the blood a second time after it returns from the lungs. All right. So, let's take a closer look at the mammalian heart, right? And this is going to help us understand this double circulation even better as we learn the anatomy a bit more. 
So this is a good diagram to show you most of the things that you'd have to know, okay, for the practical exam, most of the bigger structures anyway. So just going through them very quickly, again, we'll start at the, um, the right atrium. So here's a cavity, okay, near the top on the right side, that's the right atrium, okay, and this is where deoxygenated blood pours in from the superior and inferior vena cava. Now we go down here, okay, now this is through a valve called the tricuspid valve. Okay, so what separates the um, atrium and the ventricle is the tricuspid valve on the right side. Okay, so that's an atrioventricular valve. All right, and then you're going to get pumped from your right ventricle, okay, through a semilunar valve. This would be the pulmonary semilunar valve, okay, because we're going to the pulmonary circuit, and that's going to put you into the pulmonary artery, and you're either going to go, you know, left or right to go to both of your lungs. Okay. Now we're in the lungs and we just picked up oxygen and dropped off our CO2. So let's get back to the heart. And of course, we're going to come back to the left side of the heart because we're going to pump that oxygen throughout the body. So here we come back through the pulmonary veins. Okay. And these are all going to dump in right here to the left atrium. Okay. Now the left atrium has the bicuspid valve at the bottom or the mitral valve and you're going to go through this mitral valve into the left ventricle okay so this is the atrioventricular valve and you'll learn more about these cords and the little muscles and things soon and now you're going to pump and as i said before look at this myocardium right here look at this uh, muscle uh, cardiac muscle tissue right here very thick because this has got a pump and it's going to push that blood out to the body. And how does it do that? Well, it goes through this valve here now. As you're leaving a left ventricle, it goes up through the aortic semilunar valve. Okay. And now from there, it enters the aorta. Okay. And this is the main branch of the aorta here. And it's going to have little vessels leaving so you can feed blood. Okay. At different parts of your body. And it's going to go down through your abdomen, things like that. So now that you pumped your blood through your main blood vessel of your body, the aorta, it's going to deliver that oxygen okay to all the tissues and eventually you'll be on your way back to the heart and you're going to dump right back into the right atrium through the inferior or the uh, inferior or superior vena cava okay so the heart contracts and relaxes in a rhythmic cycle called the cardiac cycle okay and the contraction or pumping phase is called systole and the relaxation or filling with blood phase that's called diastole okay and something you're familiar with is the heart rate, also called the pulse, is the number of beats per minute. You have something called the stroke volume, and that's the amount of blood pumped in a single contraction, right? So if you have, it's not always a good thing, but some people have very big, powerful hearts, right? Which again, that actually can lead to a, you know, if they're abnormal, a shorter lifespan. You don't want a huge heart. You want your heart to be a little bigger than the size of your fist, okay? But anyway, the stroke volume is just the amount of blood pumped in one contraction. Now, when they talk about cardiac output, okay, which you'll do in one of the exercises, that's the volume of blood pumped into the systemic circulation per minute. And that depends on both the heart rate and stroke volume, right? So for example, my cardiac output right now, I'm sitting here and sure, it is what it is per minute. But if I was exercising, that means my, my cells are screaming, right? My cells are like, oh, we need more oxygen, more oxygen. So that cardiac output is going to go up in response to that. And it's all about homeostasis. All right, so back to the valves for a second. These are going to prevent backflow of blood in a heart, right? So a valves are, are meant so it's just one-way transport. And you have the atrioventricular valves, okay? They separate each atrium and ventricle. And like we said, the semilunar valves can uh, control the blood flow to the aorta and pulmonary artery, okay? So again, this is the tricuspid valve on the right side of the heart. And that won't allow this blood, when you're squeezing these ventricles here and you're pushing the blood out, right, through the pulmonary artery, you're not going to push it back up here, hopefully. That would be a disease if you did that. But we're not going to push it through this valve, okay? So it doesn't go back up into the right atrium. And same thing over here. You have this atrioventricular valve called the mitral or the bicuspid valve. And when it leaves the left atrium into the left ventricle, so now we're talking oxygenated blood, when this, bam, when this pushes the blood out of the aorta, you don't want the blood to get pushed back up into your left atrium. You want it to go from the ventricle into the blood vessel, the aorta. Now the semilunar valves, 
they're the ones that say, okay, now that I'm in a blood vessel, I don't want to fall back into the heart, into the ventricles. So that's what these semilunar valves are for. Okay, the pulmonary semilunar valve won't allow you to enter back into the right ventricle, and the aortic semilunar valve won't allow you to enter back into the left ventricle. Okay, so valves are super, super important. Okay, so speaking of valves, now let's look or listen to some of the sounds that the heart makes, okay? And, and the, the sounds are dealing with blood basically not allowed to move through these valves. All right, now you might need to put on your headphones for this, okay? Because it's going to be very quiet. But um, let's take a listen. You probably heard of the lub dub sound, right, that the heart makes. So let's listen to lub dub, okay? So hopefully you heard some of the sounds there. I don't know. It's pretty quiet. So hopefully you could put in your, your earbuds there. And I have my kids upstairs and the dog running around like crazy. So I don't know if the microphone picked up any of that. But uh, okay. So now what if there's a problem here? Okay. A backflow of blood through a defective valve causes what is known as a heart murmur. And maybe some of you dealt with something like this. So let's go ahead and listen or learn a little bit more about heart murmurs. Most valve problems are first noticed as heart murmurs. When a healthcare provider can hear the blood whooshing or a valve clicking as blood moves from one chamber to the next, it is called a heart murmur. Many heart murmurs are innocent or benign, meaning they do not cause harm. However, a murmur may also be a sign of an underlying problem with the valves, which may eventually need treatment. The most common problems being stenosis, and regurgitation. All right, so the video there mentioned valvular stenosis and regurgitation. So st stenosis is when the, the flaps of the valves, they get a little hard and they're not as uh, nimble as they once were, right? And you can't get, you can't force through as much blood because they're, they're tighter now. Okay, um, so not good because that'll limit your cardiac output, right? And then regurgitation simply means, oh, when the blood kind of can backflow, right? These valves, they can go bad. It's been, you know, ever since your heart developed, when you were still in the womb, these valves have been moving, right? And these flaps hit against each other and close all day. Well, if they ever get leaky, that can cause regurgitation, okay? And the blood can backflow, which is not a good thing. All right, let's talk about the heartbeat and the electrical signals here. So maintaining the heart's rhythmic beat. Some cardiac muscle cells are self-excitable, meaning they contract without any signal from the nervous system. Kind of. So you have the sinoatrial node or the SA node is what we call the pacemaker of the heart. And this sets the rate, the timing at which the, uh, the heart contracts. And here you can see it's at the top of the right atrium. You have this little SA node here. Okay. And uh, actually at the bottom here, we're going to talk about this as well. This is the atrioventricular node. Okay. So let's take a look, another quick little video. Your heart is a muscle that works continuously, much like a pump. Each beat of your heart is set in motion by an electrical signal 
from within your heart muscle. The electrical activity is recorded by an electrical cardiogram known as an EKG or ECG. Each beat of your heart begins with an electrical signal from the sinoatrial node, also known as the SA node. The SA node is located in your heart's right atrium. When your heart's right atrium is full with blood, the electrical signal spreads across the cells of your heart's right and left atria. This signal causes the atria to contract or squeeze. This pumps blood through the open valves from the atria into both ventricles. The P wave on the EKG marks the contraction of your heart's atria. The signal arrives at the atrioventricular node near the ventricles. Here it is slowed for an instant to allow your heart's right and left ventricles to fill with blood. On an EKG, this interval is represented by the start of the line segment between the P and the Q wave. The signal is released and moves next to the bundle of hiss located in your heart's ventricles. From the bundle of hiss, the signal fibers divide into left and right bundle branches, which run through your heart's septum. On the EKG, this is represented by the Q wave. The signal leaves the left and right bundle branches through the Purkinje fibers that connect directly to the cells in the walls of your heart's ventricles. The signal spreads quickly across your heart's ventricles. As the signal spreads across the cells of the ventricle walls, both ventricles contract, but not exactly at the same moment. The left ventricle of your heart contracts an instant before the right ventricle. On an EKG, the R wave marks the contraction of your heart's left ventricle. The S wave marks the contraction of your heart's right ventricle. The contraction of your heart's right ventricle pushes blood through the pulmonary valve to your lungs. The contraction of your heart's left ventricle pushes blood through the aortic valve to the rest of your body. As the signal passes, the walls of your heart's ventricles relax and await the next signal. On the EKG, the T wave marks the point at which your heart's ventricles are relaxing. This process continues over and over. Okay, so pretty cool stuff there, and, and it is really neat how those EKGs can show you. So if you see any problem with that PQRST, you can really, it's almost like a mechanic with a car, right? You can just look at that readout and be like, ah, there's the problem. Oh, it's making this sound, or it goes rrr, rrr, when you turn the key. Oh, your P wave is a little messed up. Oh, that's your left ventricle, right? Getting ready to push that blood out. It's really cool, too, how it's so controlled, how the video is talking about. So it's left left and see how the right okay which i'm using the wrong hands here but see how the right's just a little bit behind right so the left is a little bit earlier and it's really cool how we uh how we know all this so cardiophysiology and cardio health is amazing now and i'm sure a lot of you will end up studying this and helping out a lot of people who have trouble with it all right so here we go with the electrical impulses in the heart so your sinoatrial node, which was the pacemaker right up here at the top of the right atrium, is going to send messages down to the atrioventricular node, which is near the bottom of the right atrium, right? And 
this is great because you have a little bit of a delay here, right? Because the blood has to get from your atria down into your ventricles. So it's kind of like, hey, let's do it is the message coming in here. But then you got to give it some time. You got to give time for, for everything to get right where it needs to be. You don't want to pump an empty chamber, right? So what's going to happen is the blood's going to start, whoops, I'm sorry, filling up this ventricle here. And now the uh, the stimulus gets sent down what we call the septum. Okay, so you have an interatrial septum, and this would be the interventricular septum, so the the wall in between the ventricles. And you're going to get sent down nervous tissue, and eventually it's going to split the signal, and it's going to nail these little fibers here. These are called Purkinje fibers, and these are super super fast. Um, nervous cells, nervous system cells, and what they do is they zap the ventricle so it's just boom, it's time to contract, right? And if you're on the, the right side of the heart, you're a little bit behind the left side, right? And that's okay. So the left side is going to go boom, up through the systemic circuit and the right side boom, to the pulmonary circuit, right? And then you repeat. And you can see those waves at the bottom here, like the video just talked about, right? The PQRST waves. And it's so cool because, again, you can see people's electrical problems with their heart and know exactly how to help them out. Okay, for example, putting in an artificial pacemaker is one of the most common things that people have to have done when they have trouble with these waves. All right, and finally today we talk about the nervous systems a bit. And um, part of your nervous system is you have a parasympathetic nervous system and a sympathetic nervous system. Okay, and the pacemaker is regulated by two portions of the nervous system. So you basically have um, the parasympathetic nerves. They are for rest and digest. Life is good nothing's bothering me i'm just sitting here doing my thing right and then sympathetic nerves well this is fight or flight life is not as good right now something just happened i'm getting stimulated to do something okay and that doesn't mean life is not good it just means that you're getting a different type of stimulus over here so in this case over here hey my brain's telling my heart all is well relax you're sitting there maybe you're a a zebra Right, and you're on the savanna and you're just eating some grass, blending in in a fixed action pattern with the other zebras, right? And all is good. But all of a sudden, uh oh, here comes a cheetah. So here we have a super fast, okay, wave that our spinal cord tells our heart, hey, let's increase that heartbeat because we're ready to roll here, right? We are going to either fight or flight. And in this case, for the zebra, he'd be flying, right? He'd grow wings and fly away from that cheetah as fast as he could. So anyway, there's a little bit more about the heart and the physiology behind it and some things with the valves and blood flow. And we'll continue our discussion next time. Okay, hopefully this was helpful. Take care.